Hi and welcome back. In the series two of OTA, uh, we'll be going ahead and have a look into how can we go ahead and create a web server. That is, uh, how can our ESP32 go ahead and create a web page? And uh, based on that, we can select a binary file and upload it. Fine. So we'll uh, not be using an Arduino IDE. Unlike this, the first attempt what we have done up there. So we'll be doing it a slightly different way. And let's see it. How can we go ahead and create a web server and start doing this? But before we could go ahead, let me also show you like what really happens in this and how exactly this works. So here we go. And uh, let me just uh, give you a quick overview into what is the process of it and uh, how the things would work here with respect to uh, this particular thing up to there. So let us consider that uh, uh, this is your ESP32 out here. So we have an ESP32 and uh, based on this, my ESP32 out here. So we just have my ESP32 with this. So ESP32 out there. This is my ESP32 out here. And uh, this would be my web page. So what will happen is, and let this be my Wi-Fi router, okay? So this ESP32 will get connected to my Wi-Fi router, all right? And uh, this would in turn, will give an IP address. Will give me an IP address. So let us say 192.168. something. Now this IP address, on this IP address, this ESP32 will host a web page, host a web page. So let us say that the web page is something like this. So there will be a web page. And the first, there will be an admin panel where it will ask you to log in with the user ID and the password. When you write a proper user ID and the password, then it will take to another web page where you will have an option to select your file and then uh, go ahead and update something. That is, go ahead and upload a file to it. So we can just do it and then we'll show you the uploading has been done. So what will happen is that file will get stored in the spiffs in the SPIFS file system. And once it has been done, the ESP32 will reboot with that new firmware, new firmware. So that's how it is going to work out. And in my computer, all I just need to do is, just go ahead and enter this and I'll get all these pages. Okay, so that's how it's going to work out. So let us go and start doing this and see like how exactly it works. So let me go back to the uh, code here. quick code out there what we have with this so this code you can uh, get it from here that is uh, go to the sketch file and this also comes by default so we just need to go to the examples out there and then the are in ot and then ot web updater remember that you would only get this if you have the esp32 board installed with you if you have not installed this please go back and check the previous video out there in the week two and get it installed okay so make sure that you have been done with this the code is a lot more similar to the previous one out there with the slight differences. Uh, let me just give you a quick overview of what we have it here. So as now we're going to uh, host a web page, so we have a web server and the Wi-Fi client, and then we also have a ESP MDNS, which is going to get, take back the responses and so on. And then we have a host, uh, this is the host name, and then we have LSID. So here I just need to go ahead and give my uh, ID out there. So what is ID? That is what is ID, that is my web name. I'll just give my Wi-Fi name here, and uh, I'm going to give go ahead and can get, write my uh, password, that is Wi-Fi password. Following which, I I'm starting the web server on the port number 80 up there, and then we have a, a login page here. So login page is written in the HTML here. So everything is being stored in the login index. You would find this a little bit difficult to understand uh, as because it's not really any a very structured format here, but that's perfectly fine for this, okay? So it ha is having a uh, width of 20% and background color of this and aligned to center. And then it has a font size of four, and then it has a ESP32 login as a uh, bold heading out there. So you'll find a little bit uh, difficult with this, and uh, you also can make this a lot much uh, beautiful and so on. So to know more about this uh, web, uh, HTML part of this thing and how can you make a uh, beautiful web pages, go ahead and check out my uh, web development course to not two. 
I'll share the link in the chat box below or there in the description and the comment section. I'll also be giving you a uh, coupon code so that you can get that for a discounted link out there just because you're a part of this IoT family and that would really help you to create this. And that's really important also to have this thing being done. So you can check out that. And uh, here I have one more important thing that is script. This is a part of the JavaScript what we have here. So that web development course also contains this JavaScript so you will be able to make out. Here we are just creating a function called check and then passing a uh, parameter called form here. What I'm checking is like whether the user ID value is admin and the uh, password value is admin. That is, I'm validating that whether the both username and the password are correct. You can change this if you want to. If yes, then open the server index. If no, then give the error telling that uh, alert password and username is wrong. So that's what we are doing it. Then we're calling the server index, which needs to be loaded up if everything is fine. And then I'm calling the Ajax. So Ajax will help me to uh, go ahead and then handle that uh, uh, simultaneous things while it is uploading and so on. So this is a part of the jQuery. Even this also is being included in the course out there in the web development. You can check out that, don't forget it. So here I'm just going to go ahead and like take the data from it. And uh, when the submit has been happening and then uh, I'm calling the update and then making a post out there. And yeah, doing all of these different things and giving the progress bar, like what is the uh, total percentage of the update happening and so on. So I'm just doing all the math.crown and so on. All of these things have been happening with this. So until this is a part of the web page. And then finally, in the setup part, I'm starting the sale.begin with this baud rate and connecting to the Wi-Fi, the same scenario all over again. And then I'm using the MDNS for host name resolution. So here we go and getting that particular thing there that is host. So this is going to help me in getting that uh, uh, host name res resolved out there, okay? There is a thing. If we don't really get everything well, then we'll have an issue with this. I'll get a message, host. Uh, MDNS responder and error with this. Else, I'm going to get a message called MDNS responder started with this. I'm going to start a server HTTP get, and which is going to handle the header connection and the close. And the type of that will be sender text or HTML out there with the login index. We also have a server index. And then we are, I'm handling the uh, firmware here with a HTTP post again here. And if everything goes well, then uh, okay, and if not, I'm going to write a fail. So if error, then fail, else okay out there. And similarly here, uh, I'm going to start with the maximum file size here. I'm starting the uh, file system here. So in this, I'm going to go ahead and start the file system so that I can get the file. And then here, is where I'm handling the upload file status. Everything's going to be fine, like whatever the file size it is and so on. And if everything is being done, then write update success and then rebooting it and then good to go with this. So this is what has been happening here. And at the end, like calling the server to get started. So that server has been handled in the white loop that is handle client, which is in turn going to handle the complete of this with a delay of one milliseconds, which is just for the stability out there and nothing much more than that. So let us just uh, go ahead and uh, upload this code here uh, to this. So I'll click on upload here with this. So let me just go ahead and click on upload here and make sure that tool is connected to the COM3 and everything is all normal. I'll upload this code here and I should get the data going well. So everything is on please and uh, make sure that the laptop on which you're getting it connected is also connected to the same network on which this is getting connected because it is going to go ahead and host the web page on that particular Wi-Fi itself with that particular IP address. So you cannot access that IP address of this IP address from any other network. Yeah, you need not use any uh, IDE, unlike the last time here. So you need not use any of those IDE up there. You can directly, uh, you will upload it from the wild phone also, and everything should work fine. I'll just upload this. So you should be able to do it even from wild phone if it is connected to the same Wi-Fi or any device, anything such, you can be, you will be able to do it. So everything has been uploaded here. And let me quickly show you the this thing. So you can see this, it says, uh, connected to Ahmed out there and the IP address is this and everything is fine. That is MD and NS started out there, right? Which is this side. So let's just see if it works as expected. I'll just copy this address here. Control uh, C with this and go back to the page here. So I'm going back to the uh, this thing. I'll just paste that IP address and press enter. 
When I press enter, you see this, it says I use the login page and the value what I have to give is admin, right? So I'll write admin and if I give some other value and uh, let us say ID give ADS, it's to give me an alert from So let me just write the proper one, admin, fine, and then write admin and press enter. So now I am into it, fine. I'm into the page of that. The most important question here is that like, what need to be uploaded here, right? This is the most important part. So what need to be up uploaded here? Remember, you are not going to go and go ahead and upload any INO file that is a sketch file, no. Because when we upload a sketch file, what happens, like it gets compiled and then the binary is being converted and then the binary is uploaded to this, right? So the same scenario here also, that is I need to go ahead and first compile that and then create a binary of it. So let us just do it and I'll show you how to do it. So go back here, let us just do one thing. I'll add one single line of the code here. So I'll let's add a serial. So serial dot print or oh, Ellen and write successfully updated. Fine, I'll just close this. Now I'll just add one single line here just to make some slight changes out here. And remember as earlier, you need to have the remaining OTA part in the code along with your ex uh, added information, along with your added instructions so that you are able to go ahead and update it again, fine? Same as the previous scenario, you need to have the remaining part of the OTA available with it. So I'll keep it everything up there. And now I'll do it, I'll click on sketch and I'll click on uh, export compile binary. So this is going to compile it and export a binary file. So I'll, I'll do that now. So it says I need to save this. I need to save this. So this is the, I'll just save this file and I'll just save this. Okay, and I'll click on exp uh, sketch again and compile the binary. So let this, it'll take some time, I'll just wait for it. So you see this here, like uh, we have this being compiled out there. So what I'll do is now I'll go to the sketch and click on the show sketch folder. Show a sketch folder out there. So this should, this should open a folder in which that particular sketch is present out there. So you can just see this, uh, I have a file here and uh, if I just come back to this thing, there's a file here. And I have something called as otwebupdater.eno bin binary file out there. That is binary file. So I need to go ahead and select this file and upload this. Okay. So I'll just copy this path from here, control C, and then go back to my web page and uh, click on choose file and then paste that path that off. And uh, yeah, I have that file. I click on open and update this, click on update. So should we see this progress here? And that is uploading this. What is 62 and so on. Everything is working as expected out there. So I'll just wait for this to get it done. So progress done here. And uh, let's see what happens. So 100% done here. Let me just also see this, this thing. Yeah, because this successfully updated, it is already being done. The time it was being done, you can see the changes out here. So this is how you can go ahead and do it. So in this scenario, what happens, like the benefit than the previous is that you need not use an Arduino ID anymore. You can also upload this with a phone or with any other computer, but just that they both need to be in the same network. But you need not go ahead and then uh, use an Arduino ID again and all of those things. Anybody can update this. So this is a much better way of doing it. And in the series three, we'll see how can we do it. Much better, much better. until then take care and I'll see you in the next video.